Hey guys, welcome back to Watch Gauge. I'm gonna keep this intro very short and sweet because as you could probably see from the timing there in this YouTube video, this video is quite a long one. So I'm introducing my next or newest brand here on Watch Gauge, which is Formex. A handful of weeks ago was the worn and wound windup. And one table that I found myself going back to over and over and over was Formex. And yes, some may say that Formex is not considered a micro brand. Uh, in a way, I feel that's kind of true. In a way, I don't. They are small, independent brand owned by an individual. They have been around since 1999, but recently, over the last four or five years, they've been taken over by Raphael, who you're going to see in this video in just a minute. So I kept going back and back and back to that table, checking out the watches, talking to these guys. So Raphael and Marcus, the head of uh, marketing and a bunch of other things because it is a small team. So Marcus and Raphael are absolutely some of the coolest guys that I've met in a long time in the watch industry. They're young, they're energetic, they're extremely passionate about their brand and the watches absolutely show their passion and their ingenuity and their love for what they're doing. So aside from the amazing watches, they're great guys. I had the opportunity to get on a Skype call with them the other day, figured we'd work it into an intro video. I did not expect it to go as long as it did, and the fact of the matter is, we could have talked for another two hours. But this video that you're about to watch is a really great insight into their character, into their passion, into their process, and all of the things that make this brand such an amazing brand. So before I go any further, if you're looking at this uh, 50 or 60 minute clip saying, wow, this is way too long, Forumx is now my newest brand. It is on WatchGauge.com. For the time being, we're going to be shipping directly from Formex because they include their duties and taxes and shipping with every watch sold. Additionally, I didn't want to mess with customs and getting all these watches here prior to the holiday season because that would only delay the fact that I could put them on watch gauge and then get them into the hands of you guys. So I was messaging with Marcus earlier this morning. He assured me that any watch purchased before December 19th will make it to you just about anywhere in the world, particularly in the United States. So. When you see it, if you want one for Christmas, if you want to gift it to yourself or have somebody else gift it to you, if you get your order in on Watch Gauge by December 19th, you will have it in time for the Christmas holiday. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the Skype video that I recorded. It was supposed to be a side-by-side -side pane of them and me talking, and this new software I'm using for recording Skype is brand new to me, and I must have recorded it differently than I thought I was. So in any case, you're gonna see them the whole time. I'm telling you, we had a great time talking. You're gonna get an amazing amount of insight, not only into just Formex, but just the mindset of a, of a passionate brand owner. So again, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to the Skype video. Check out the Formex watches on watchgauge.com, and we'll talk to you soon. Cool, man, I'm excited. I'm excited, I was like, you know, sitting up looking through all of your uh, website and everything again, but a little more, a little more, focus to detail and uh dude i love what you guys are doing i really do thanks yeah Thank you. yeah so i just uh between between the extreme sports stuff between you know the product obviously but um the fact that you guys are the face of the brand is is really important i think a lot of i think a lot of companies especially in the micro world because i think you guys are a bit more developed than a micro brand for sure but um Especially in the micro brand, you have some of these guys who have great designs, and making great watches, but um, there's no personality behind it. You know what I mean? So they, I feel like if somebody gets in front of the brand a bit more, like you guys are doing, like I'm doing with Watch Gauge, I think I think those brands are suffering because they're not doing it. You know? Yeah, I think if um, especially for smaller brands or even micro brands, it's important to put your face out there. Even though we're not, you know, we're not huge fans of um, of uh, being in front of cameras all the time, um, but you you have to put your face out there because um, people need to trust you, to, especially to commit commit to an online purchase, um, you know, that is above one k or even at just uh, five hundred dollars, uh, which which is a big ticket item for most people. Um, so it's important for them to see who's behind the brand and to actually have a face they can they can um, match with the watch they're trying to order or with the product they like and and also you know even though we might not be considered micro brand anymore 
Um, we still are very hands-on with, with the production, with the design. So each of us working here on Formix has to do a, has to wear many different hats. Right. Um, so it's also nice if you see one of us in a picture, uh, you can be sure that this person was deeply involved with the creation process, the marketing, customer service. So everybody does a bit of everything. Not, yeah. not everything, but everybody has their <laughs> many disciplines they have to you know master to to make a, a small brand run. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like you guys straddle that that line between being somewhat of a micro but a much more developed company with uh, with really all, all of your ducks in order and, and you know there's a lot going on at your brand a lot more than can be handled by a small in you know micro per se but yet you still have that feel of being personal being you know attached to the consumer and to the whole process and, and things like that so I think that's gonna be a huge key to your success yeah, so <laughs> I think it's, it's it's also important for us, as long as we can, uh, take care of all the customer requ requests between Marcus and I, um, or a third person that works here, um, we have to do it, but obviously once you start selling, you know, 20, 30,000 watches a year, um, it's just simply not possible to answer uh, each person or each email um, personally, but I think... Even then, I'm going to take out some time during the week to, to, to try to answer and at least look at the, the customer uh, concerns and then communications to, to see what's going on in, in their minds, which is, in my opinion, very important to, to, um, to know for us as a brand because that's, um, that's the link between us and what the customer wants, what they need, what they, what they think about us. Uh, and I think a lot of the bigger brands don't have the opportunity um, or you know, don't let it happen that, that customers can talk directly to them because they have a line um, between the customer and, and the brand, which is uh, the retailer. Yeah. And really, the retailer gets all the flack when something goes wrong. Um, no, uh, you don't. You don't say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you should know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, but Thanks. yeah, Thanks. rest assured yeah. that even if you guys buy something at, at Watch Gauge, you can still contact us directly. Obviously, if, if it's um, something concerning our watches, um, yeah, uh, we can help you or we'll, we'll discuss it with John and, and help together. Yeah, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. Uh, you know, Watch Gauge has now been in business uh, about a year and three months since we launched the site. And knock on wood, I have not had any major issues whatsoever. And I think um, I think you probably you probably have the same the same scenario where if there's an issue, I'm the guy that's handling it. So there really isn't an issue, right? Like if I mean I've had people who who you know for one reason or another had an issue that was a little bit extraordinary or, or outside of what you would normally see, but because I'm the guy handling it, it it's my business. I'm very cognitive of the reputation of the brand and myself and so on and so forth that I pretty much will do anything to make every situation correct. And knock on wood, I haven't had, haven't had a major situation yet. I'm sure you guys probably have the same because at the end of the day, they're, they're contacting one of you guys or, or somebody else in your office, but you're hearing about it and you step in to rectify any situation whatsoever. You know, yeah. that's, that's, that's important for a small brand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for us, yeah, as you said, we never had, and that's a big knock on wood because we're about to ship out our Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> big knock on wood for us there, but we never had any major issues where, you know, where we had to um, recall a se like a series of watches or anything because right. with right. each new model you design, you, you learn something and usually there is something um Something goes wrong at some stage in production. It's just normal if you if you produce such intricate things as a, as a mechanical watch. But um, usually we were always able to catch it and still deliver in time, um, and 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 fix the problem before before it happens. And with each model you produce, um, you gain experience um, on what to look out for in your next model. And since we're not coming, you know, we, we're not just. Uh, um, uh, you know, people who came into the watch world from you know being fans, but we're coming from the production side, and we've been producing watches for for major brands, for high end brands, and and we've been producing cases, uh, bracelets, dials, so pretty much every part except for the movement. So um, 
in for the movement we're gonna have to trust our movement suppliers yeah and um even there there's there, there can be issues but if there's an issue and, and a customer finds himself with with, with you know like with, with a crown in his hands with the crown stamp <laughs> on it it happens you know you know I've, I've had that happen with watches that were thirty thousand dollars you know so it's not something unique yeah and exactly I've, I've read a, a post on the divers watch group the other day where somebody said you know like I, I've had this problem with my watch out of the box a new watch and it was a you know a four hundred dollar watch and and people replied to it saying you know like I've had that with my twenty thousand dollar <laughs> Rolex, and right. it happens. The um, the thing on um, where the difference uh, can be made is how you handle it as a brand. You know, I, I had that in my that was like in my head about to say that it it really comes down to, you know, not what happens to you, but how you react to it and how you how you stand behind you know your own pride and your own business and things like that. And I again, that's one of the things that that draws me to you guys and, and to the brand is because. I know for a fact that if, if goodness forbid down the road something happened with a Formex watch that I had sold, that I just you know pick up the phone or I or I shoot an email and you guys are right there to handle it. So uh, it's it's a, it's going to be a good relationship for not only between sure. us but also between us and the customer, right? And and in a in a case where a customer gets upset because something like that happens, and I understand them, <laughs> you know, if if you get something new, you pay for it, you're looking forward to get it. You unbox it and something's wrong with it, and then you have to go through the returns process. Sure. Um, I understand their frustration, and we're doing everything to um, to to make them happy because it's also a, a good opportunity to turn an unhappy customer into a loyal customer by just treating them with the you know with the utmost respect and and understanding their their frustration, even if sometimes they. You know, choose a tone that is not not something that you enjoy reading. But I understand them, and in the end, even if we have to lose money on that watch, I don't care. Exactly. What counts is the customer's experience. In in that case, then you can do that if it doesn't happen too often. But, right. But you know, if, it, it's funny that you say that because I've had you know, look, as you mentioned, things happen, right? And I've had customers, uh, and again, not very many, but I've had customers who've come back come back at me. With an email or a phone call that that, like you said, was you could tell they're upset. You could tell that they're you know displeased, and you know you handle it the best way possible. I love the fact that you said that even if you lose money on that one particular situation by replacing it or anything like that, um, if you handle it the correct way, I found that I have a lot of a lot of customers who maybe a situation happened, started off a little uh, you know a little bit not great, but they've come back more than two or three or four times to purchase watches again. So it kind of is a testament to your your success in handling it. Yeah, exactly. And and you know we have um we have pretty good rates with UPS. We work with UPS for shipping and you know the shipping is included as well. And um we have pretty good rates on shipping it out, but since we don't have a huge volume of importing stuff uh, a return costs us about three times as much as sending out a watch. Right. So, you know, and without exception, if it's something that falls under warranty or, or if, you know, if the guy didn't drop the watch from the third floor onto concrete, yeah. If, yeah. if there is an issue, we'll pay for return shipping and, yeah. you know, he doesn't, the customer doesn't have to do anything. And I think that's important because they've, they've trusted you enough to, um, you know, to pay whatever the watch costs ahead. And, and trusted you enough to, to handle the, their shipping quickly, which we do. We you know we also probably you, you're probably the same very you same. Ship the same day, and and you, you you do everything to to satisfy the customer. So if there's something that goes wrong, you, you just have to handle it correctly. Fantastic. So uh, let's let's talk about you guys for for a second. Um, quite interesting when I'm looking at the website that uh, that. You guys are, uh, and, and uh, Marcus, I'm assuming maybe you too, but you're into extreme sports and adrenaline and, and things like that. I, <laughs> I mean, are both, are both of you? Because I know that Raphael, it says it on the website. Yeah, that I'm, I'm certainly not as extreme as Ralph. Okay. I, uh, I enjoy uh, the sports as well. Uh, and, and when I go with Ralph, it's certainly Ralph doing the crazy stuff and <laughs> I do maybe the filming of it. Right. So I have the extreme part uh, as well. So you're the logical one of, of the two of you. 
<laughs> yeah. it might, might be. Ralph is the one with the crazy ideas. That's yeah. also why he's doing all the designs, uh, all the engineering of the of the watches. And uh, I, I, I enjoy uh, uh, getting it organized. Let's okay. say good. Yeah. Good, yeah. So, so Ralph, I saw. And I'm, I'm looking down at my notes here. You are a race car driver, a free diver, a sky diver. <laughs> um, is it something you've always been into? Yeah, actually, yeah. I was um, as a very young child. I was rather scared of everything, and that quickly changed from at the age of about seven, eight, when we start. Uh, we first started riding bicycles. Um, and we started building ramps, and usually I was the one who had to test the new ramp first, <laughs> which earned me a couple of trips, me and my mom, to, to the ER yeah. when I was a child. So I was always kind of a, uh, kind of a knot when it comes to, you know, I mean, risking things, but not without thinking about them, I mean, right. always yeah. calculating the risk. Um, none of what I'm doing is I would consider a, you know, a, a crazy risk. I mean, right. Probably the most dangerous thing um, I do on a regular basis is downhill skateboarding because, you know. That's that's one thing I saw and I was actually saving that one because that to me, out of all yeah. the things you can do, is probably the most insane. Yeah. You know, you're, you're going downhill on four wheels that are about three inches in diameter um, yeah. at what, 50, 60 miles an hour? Yeah, up to. Up without, to but, without breaks. Yeah. <laughs> without, without breaks, but you, you <laughs> You can foot brake, so you can put your foot down All right. to brake, but we usually drift to brake. Yeah. But it's actually a pretty efficient way of braking. Um, so the the only problem there is it requires uh, skill to brake. It's not – you can't just hit a lever and it brakes. Right. You have to you know, initiate yeah. a slide. Or, so, so that's pretty much the, the most risky thing, I would say. But even in within that, you can calculate the risk. And I've actually never gotten hurt downhill <laughs> skateboarding badly, except for losing some skin on the road. <laughs> yeah. That well, was a rock once uh, coming back from lunch, I think, uh, full with blood on his hand. And uh, <laughs> that, that was a wild <laughs> accident, but uh, Just he, he, he yeah. doesn't even have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, so, so when most people go out to lunch and go to Chick-fil-A, Raph is, uh, you know, going down a hill at 50 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. I mean, not not as much as I used to because um, Formex is taking a lot, uh, taking up a lot of our time. Marcus as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, since we're a small team, we're doing, as I mentioned, a lot of uh, of what we produce and put out. You know, copy. Um, Marcus actually joined the team now three years ago. Yeah. But yeah, and he he came from you know com from completely different. Um, uh, background. We actually studied together. We studied uh, international management together. Okay. Um, and then he was working in hotels as a F and B manager. And um, so you want to organize the yeah. part, part of the the job. Right. And uh, and then he was looking for a new challenge, and I definitely needed help with marketing. So um, he he jumped on board as our marketing director. Um, which but which also means that uh, he had to learn how to film, edit, right. you know, and he had to learn Photoshop, and he actually did in everything himself. He learned everything himself, and and now whenever you see videos about us, it's usually produced by this guy. <laughs> right on, great, awesome. So so let's talk about the watches a little bit. Um, so we met. When when was Warren and Wild? October, September. Beginning of November? Yeah. November. So we actually met in person for the first time at the Warren & Wound Wind Up in New York, which, you know, to me is the best, one of the best, if not the best, watch show in the United States. Um, and I, I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm looking at you guys, and I'm not saying this because, you know, we're going to be doing business together. But hands down, Formex was probably the biggest surprise and, and one of my very favorite brands at the show. Um, and, I, and I genuinely mean that, you know. When you when you see press or when you see posts on on social or anything like that, you know you can look at the watch and say, "Wow, that's a great looking watch," or you know, "Gee, I like that." But then sometimes you see it in person and you don't like it, or vice versa. The fact of the matter is, is I, I a good friend of mine, Ricardo from uh, the UGWC, the Urban Gentry Facebook group, a couple months ago, and said, "Hey, have you seen the, the Formexes lately?" And and I'm like, "Yeah, they look great." But then when I got to the show. 
and I met you guys, and I actually got them in my hands and on my wrist. I was like, whoa. So this it had the effect of I like it when I'm seeing it on the computer screen, but then I put it on my wrist, and I'm like, I was blown away. So, so that being said, that kind of was our... Then we started chatting about what I do, what you do, and, you know, I think by the end, I think I came by your table about six times, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, <That's> uh, right. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm glad we're finally making things work. So now we're going to be doing this a little bit differently than I do with some of the other brands where I just basically purchase watches, inventory them here, and sell them. Uh, and I just kind of want our, my clients to know this and understand, but because that you guys... You guys went into effect basically eliminating brick and mortar stores, correct? So you did that to be able to connect with your clients, to be able to cut on the on the cost of the watch for the client. And in turn, your margins or our margin, my margins with you guys will be a little bit less than what I have with most brands. So I think we came up with a pretty good solution where I'll help market and promote support every way I can and sell them and then when I sell them we're gonna have them shipped directly from you to the exactly. client and um, so that's just so it's understood for for my customers but we're gonna be starting with I believe three collections is that right uh, yes I believe right we're gonna be doing the pilot the motorsport and the element yes Correct. awesome so let's kind of briefly talk about maybe either the watches as a whole of all three collections or individually each collection to kind of give people an idea of what they what they can understand about the brand. Mm -hmm. Well, for maybe first um, real quick about um, what you said with um, going direct to consumer and, and our strategy overall. It's um, one of the effects that you mentioned is that it looks better in real life than, than what you saw on, on the internet, yeah. which yeah. is obviously great for us and for our customers. Because and and it, don't get me wrong, they look fantastic online, but... Yeah, I know, but, you know, it, I, I get it that um, people want to feel it, people, you know, the effect of having a Formex in your hands uh, with the case suspension system, the, the, the different case designs, the finishing, uh, it means it's kind of a compliment to us, thanks. Sure. <laughs> it means that we managed to... Put out the the desired quality and and you know even more than you would expect from from the pictures and the descriptions, um, and this is also a challenge for selling online. Um, you know we're probably not the cheapest uh, direct to consumer brand out there, so you can find uh, you can probably find watches with the same movements uh, for less. But uh, one of the reasons for for that might also be the oh no definitely is the complexity of the of the case construction with the um, we'll, we'll get to that later and we'll show you on the video yeah uh, um, and the finishing and um, coming from from a case production and design and, and product development for the higher end brands I always kind of have to you know tame myself when I when I developed not to want too much and not to make it too expensive right. but in the end our prices are are very very competitive and um, especially comparing it to the same product we would sell uh, in a brick and mortar store you know like the, the elements is, is probably what is it listed in US dollars about fifteen hundred dollars yeah um, if I had to sell the same watch it would largely be above three grands in the store and right. that's simply because we're going direct to consumer so yes whoever wants to work with us has to kind of accept lower margins yeah but they can also um list the product in their in their catalog that's it's kind of hard to top at this price point so our hope is also to get some locations where people can actually go into a store and look at them yeah. Uh, where people, where, where the, the the retailers are are willing to to um, you know to be open to discussion because I think the whole watch market is changing um, as well and 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 you know online is slowly becoming a reality even for the big brands. Um, you know I'm saying slowly because it seems like the watch industry uh, always takes a bit more time to adapt to technology. For sure. I'll, I quick, think not to, not to interrupt. I quantify that about four to five years right now. Well, so. not to interrupt. I first started in the industry with Chrono Swiss in 1999. It tells you how old I am. But for three years, we were begging uh, Germany, headquarters in Germany, 
begging them for a website. So I used to travel the country, I used to travel the entire United States, and I would have to physically carry these hardbound books or catalogs to stores when I was pleading and saying, you can put all of this on the internet for millions of people to see versus the 20 catalogs I'm leaving at a store. So for many years, I think it was after I left Chrono Swiss in about 1995, I'm sorry, 2004, 2005 that they first got a website. And uh, so like you said, probably five or six years behind where they should be. That's what I'm saying. And, and, and Formex is kind of the opposite, right? You guys are, yeah, I mean, we'll talk about the, 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 the app and the band in a second, but you guys are adopting things that are, are far ahead of most of the watch industry. So I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just certainly want to make that point. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's, um, that's basically what I'm saying. We're, it's going to take time for the retailers to adapt to the online reality. Um, and I don't think online is going to ever replace uh, brick and mortar, in, especially in luxury goods, because of that aspect of people wanting to feel right. and, and something. But for us, um, the hardest sell is um, getting a customer to buy his first Formex watch. And usually, once they get their first, um, they're you know they're an, an easier customer for us to convert again because they know the build quality, the feel. Um, what comes with it when you open your package? Uh, there might be a surprise in it. <laughs> and, and, your customer will see. And the service you get afterwards. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. We've so been talking about this before. This is one major part. And this is also why we um, why we offer uh, free returns. You know, if, if you don't like the watch, um, you can send it back to us and at our charge. That that was going to be my point as well. That you know, even if a client buys it through a watch gauge. You know, with every watch that I sell, I, I, I say to people, look, I, I'm selling a luxury good online where you're not holding it and feeling and touching it where I used to work in brick and mortar. And my feeling is it, you don't need this watch. So if you purchase it and you don't love it, let me know. I'll send you a label. You send it right back. So it, it, we're going to have the same same idea here as well with, with Formex. And uh, I think that's important for somebody buying something online. I wouldn't I wouldn't purchase something for hundreds if not thousands of dollars where if I don't like it I'm married to it I got to figure out a go a way to go sell it on eBay or somewhere else so uh, mm -hmm. good point and for us you know mentioning again the, the high uh, rates we have to pay for return shipping for us a customer that sends his watch back um, at our charge it's gonna cost us about um, just above a hundred dollars on a customer that we didn't make any money right. on right but in the end, that guy's going to be amazed, and he's probably going to keep looking at us. He's not going to. For sure, you know, he's going to be looking for other models that maybe did fit the bill, right? And mm -hmm. then, you know, I always look at I always look at uh, GoPro. You know, back when GoPro first came out, they were brilliant because they basically made their clients into what they call evangelists. You know, GoPro evangelists, where the client they urged the clients to go out and take video and post it online and send it to them, and they'll post it. And so as I was saying, I handwrite an envelope, and in that envelope, there's a couple of things, a polishing cloth and so on and so forth, but there's a card in there that I have, you know, asking people to take photos of their new watch, wrist shots, or whatever, and either post it on social and tag us, or send me the photos by email, and I will post it. Um, so I'm trying, trying to take that GoPro mentality of making your clients sing your praises, and as you mentioned when you take a return and the client doesn't end up with the watch, it costs you money, but that client will still go out and praise you, whether it be on Facebook or Instagram or anywhere else. And I think that's very, very key. And I think a lot of brands miss that fact. Mm -hmm. And usually, you know, like it was a risk to set to set that up like that, our business model, but in the end, we have a very low return rate. And the main reason for returns is, uh, sorry, but my risk is too small. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Um, and so, so it's not that they didn't like the design or the feel of the watch, or they, you know, they're they're not happy with the quality. It's simply they put it on and they're like, ah, I can't pull it off. Um, so we're not we're not actually losing any money with that, and the customers are happy because they also, you know, they they may they might have to pay it um, before we send it, but then they, they get it back without anything. So they didn't, char we didn't charge them a cent for, yeah. for experience of looking at the watch. Yeah. The whole size, uh, issue, uh, we, 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 we were thinking about how can we solve this? How can we have the customer try on our watch, uh, before buying it online? 
Yeah. And I think you sh you you showed your wrist before, and uh, that that that's exactly what we came up with. Brilliant. Uh, that really helps us to uh, to to lower this number of returns because of sizes, because of how the the watch looks on the wrist. And uh, it's been quite a journey to get there, uh, and we're still improving what 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 we build up. And it's it's besides of doing watches and and and, and creating new designs and new models. It's quite a, a, a cool side project we're doing. So, so let, I'll, I'll kind of give explain to the folks watching this. So, Formex, these brilliant gentlemen, they um, they created the Formex Tryon app, which uh, which I also have on my phone. And these these bands you were given out at uh, Worn and Wound. However, the people watching this you can go get the get the Formex Tryon app. They can uh, download an image of this. Yeah, PDF. cut it out. Put it on their wrist, and then with your camera on your smartphone, you can actually try the watch on. So you press try on, you wait for it to load a little bit, and then you have to aim. Oh, let me. <laughs> Quite hard. That's, that's let, not, me, let me hold it. That's and, not uh, awkward at all. <laughs> is it going? Not yet. There yeah. you go. Go. Yeah, yeah it, takes, it takes a moment for the camera to recognize it, but usually quicker than that. And then you get a real life size Formex on your wrist, and you can actually go in. Yep. And you can. Now you can slide. change the models. You can change the dial colors, the bands. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the angle of your wrist. Yeah, there. That's that's. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it yeah. looks pretty funny from the no, other side. <laughs> but I, 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 can, <laughs> I can tell you guys, it works awesome. Everybody watching this, it works awesome. You can you can download the you know the file. Print it out on a piece of paper, cut it. All the customers actually get one of these, so you know they can try on our next models. Yeah, it's gonna be their next watch. Yeah, for the next watch. Yeah. But it's a fun thing to play around with. A lot of people keep them in their car around the ship stick and play around <laughs> it's, with them for it's stress. So fun. It's so funny you mentioned that because I have it on my on my shifter in my truck. Uh, and about five minutes before we got on the call, I'm like, oh, geez, I have to go get my pen. And, <laughs> and I like, I ran because I don't want to miss your call. So I ran and got it. Um, but it's, it's hysterical that you mention that. Cause I, no joke, I will be sitting there in traffic going into New York city or something, take it off and I'll just be like playing with it on my wrist. Exactly. It's a big stress reliever. And I think we should start doing a, a hashtag for that. So people can show us their, let's, their bands around the shift stage. <laughs> yeah, let's start that. So uh, what are we going to do? We're going to do a uh, Formex, Formex shift uh, wrap. Hashtag Formex shift wrap. How's that? And then it's, it's also, you know, having it on a, on these old school slap straps is what you call them. Yeah. Um, is, is a great way. You know, when we go to a watch fair, like, Worn and Wound, or the week before Worn and Wound, we were at a show in Munich, Germany. Yeah. And in the, we, we bring like about 1,500 of these to a show, Jeez. and we'll make sure they're all gone by the time the show's over. Absolutely. And, um, people, we don't actually have to do anything. People actually are hesitant to take them, but when we say, yeah, hey, go ahead, take it, and they're like, wow, um, that's cool, thanks. And then by the end of the show, or by the second day, or, or even into the first day, you can see like, about seventy percent of people at the show walking around with them at right. the other bands, <laughs> well, playing around with them. I could tell you right now, as a watch guy, I'm like I am all about swag, right? Like I've got I've got on my shelf in there, and I've got at home all the things I've collected from uh, Basel and from uh, the SIHH over the years. Um, I've got tote bags from IWC, and you know I've got all this stuff, keychains from almost every brand, and. Like no joke, I sit and play with this all the time, and it's it's, it's so funny. Not, not something for the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, this is this is more functional. I get to walk around with it, right? So yeah. we have to uh, we we have to make sure that we get this in as many hands as possible, or at least have people print it out, try on their watch, and uh, when they purchase watch, they'll get the band. So so guys, even if you're like ninety percent close to purchasing a Formex, <laughs> the ten percent is this band. I promise you. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, so. so we did with this. Um, we started developing the app with with an app company in, uh, here in Switzerland, and then at the end, at trade show, or, or at watch shows, um, a lot of brands came up to me and and were asking, you know, where, where did you get this?" And yeah, uh, can we do it? And we we actually referred them to the the app company, and um, nobody or they didn't manage to get in the 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 
the contracts because they were too expensive or too slow or whatever. Um, so I found, um, by chance, I met a guy at Salon QP in, in uh, London, and we're working with him for the app development now, and we're actually working on solutions for other brands and in other industries even. So Very that's smart. Some, yeah. Very smart. Yeah. You, unfortunately, unfortunately for us, or fortunately, you're going to end up making a lot more money on the app than you're going to on uh, owning a watch brand, you know? But as, as of long, now, <laughs> not yet. As long as you stick with the brand, I'm okay with that. I hope I hope you do. <laughs> well, that's Formex is a, is our baby, so we're not yeah. gonna. Yeah. Right on, right on. So one thing I want to talk about is is the Formex watches. The case construction is bananas. Now, Raph, you come from you come from a family of watch making history, correct? Like you, your I believe your father owned the company, and you guys have made cases and everything for brands for years. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it started with my dad. Um, he has uh, five brothers. They all immigrated from Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he came here at the age of 14 about. Um, and he started after school. He finished school in, in Italy, and then he came here. And he did his first apprenticeship at, uh, no, actually, his first little job was at Bilova Acutron. Okay. When it was back here in Biel. Uh, he, was a, he was a bicycle courier for them. And then he kind of worked his way up and then ended up at Rado. And at the end, they, um, he was um, uh, pulled aboard from, uh, by, by a company producing watch dials. And um, then when they actually sold that company, they, they split off. It was three partners. And one of them was uh, Rolf Schneider, uh, uh -huh. who went on to buy uh, Uli Snowden. And I've, my dad, they they were really good friends. Uh, um, I love yeah. Rolf Schneider. I I've I've actually spent quite a bit of time with him in person, and uh, his loss was a great shock. But we had a lot of fun together at, at Basel and and other spots. He's very one of a kind. He's not somebody that will that you will forget even after meeting him once. I yeah. would say. Yeah. He's a he's a great great guy. He was a great guy. Yeah, for sure. Um, and what he did with the company was just amazing from Absolutely. where he took it on and where, where he brought it was, was incredible. So my dad went on um, to found his own company to, to supply um, uh, watch brands with, with components. And my dad's always been kind of an inventor. And, and some of the systems you see on the Formex actually come out of his, um, of his uh, box of, of ideas. And um, I started with him working at his company doing product development um, for different watch brands, uh, for cases. Then I started taking on some private label projects for the company uh, where I got into producing the whole watch. And that's what, that's when the opportunity to take over Formex arose uh, for, uh, four years ago. And, um, yeah, been doing that ever since. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So unlike most brands, um, micro brands, but as well as big Swiss brands, you guys actually make all of the case components and dials and everything in-house, correct? Or correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, we, we work with um, with the partners um, that I've been working with at my dad's company before, and that's that's about uh, partners of, of 15, 20 years. Um, and when we do when we do small series or prototyping, that's uh, when I go over there. Actually, his company is, is about... Um, a hundred yards from here. Okay. So we we'll just run over there and use his mechanic shop or whatever, his CNC machines, um, laser engraving machines. So, so the machine park is quite extensive. And um, for small series, we do work um, in house. But for the larger, for the larger series, we, we work with partners that where we can outsource some of the component production. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of this, uh, a lot of it is done here. Yeah. Wonderful. And we also work with. Um, with our own dial manufacturer in, uh, in, in the Jura Mountains. It's a high-end dial manufacturer for also for a couple of pretty well-known brands. Right. And right. we've got the facilities there um, at our disposal to develop new stuff and and then also produce production is, uh, for some of the models is done there. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So, and then your, your cases have a suspension system. And yes. It's going to be a little difficult to explain, but basically the outer part of the case is affixed to the where the strap would be and on your wrist, yeah. And then the watch itself is on a suspension system. 
So on some of the models, you can, yeah, actually most of the models, when you look at the case from the side, this part here is a suspension piston, like uh, not unlike anything you will find on a car or a, a bicycle. Yeah. So yeah. when you push from below, it will actually compress. Yeah. Um, which is the same function as a as a, as a car suspension. And Formix was actually founded as a as a motorsports um, uh, themed brand, and this was kind of their way of of um, adding some some motorsports element to an actual watch design. Right. Um, and um, it is a shock absorption functionally. But the, the, the main function that you can, as a customer, while wearing it day to day, uh, that you will feel is it actually works when you move your wrist. Um, the way you move your wrist will make actually the, the, the watch give a little bit. And it makes, uh, since they're pretty, most of them are pretty large watches at around uh, 45, 46 millimeters. Um, it will make it wear much smaller and much more comfortably well, than, than this yeah, that, size. That, that was one thing that surprised me because, again, my first experience was at Worn and Wound, and I, I'd known about the suspension system, and in my head I'm thinking, well, gee, you know, that's that's kind of gimmicky, that's cool. But then what I really didn't realize is when I put it on my wrist, you know, and I, and I flex my arm in any direction, the watch would move, therefore making it feel a lot more comfortable. And, yeah. and gives you less of a feeling that you're wearing a large watch on your wrist. Because I generally don't go above 44 millimeters on a watch. And, and the Formex felt much smaller than that as a feeling watch, but still had that, that good appearance of a, a big size watch. So, uh, so very cool. It's, it's very functional. It's a lot more functional than I anticipated it to be. Yeah, the, at, at first sight, uh, it could seem a bit gimmicky, but there is an actual function. Right. And, the fact that is that is patented by us and then w that we're the only ones uh, being able to use this is uh, certainly also something that you don't find anywhere else within your watch collection. Right. Awesome. And does give a give a certain uh, uh, design of the watch. You have uh, in in every of our watches these four screws, which you see uh, on on the bezel or next to the bezel, and and that. Kind of gives uh, gives it the typical Formex look when you see uh, our watches. It creates a signature brand look. Absolutely, it awesome. does, and it also creates a, a design challenge for us, where where we have to build the system in. It, it takes some space, uh, which adds to the the overall diameter of the watch, obviously. And um, one of the main or one of the most often heard comments about uh, from our customers is size, or from our not yet customers right. especially because they say I, I can't pull a watch that is 46 and a half mil I can't pull it off on my wrist right. and um, and then we started developing uh, the essence which we won't tease too much about because yeah. it's not yeah. stock yet uh, <laughs> um, which is a 43 millimeter but um, you've had it on and most of people at watch shows when they put it on we we don't tell them the the, the size beforehand and we tell them to guess and people will guess between 41 and 42, usually. Uh, but it's a 43, and it comes uh, with the system. I'll just sorry, show you quickly. Uh, <laughs> um, you're killing me here, because, <laughs> because everybody, this, this watch is not available yet. So, And this was easily my favorite watch at Worn and Wild, without a doubt. Easily my favorite watch. So that has the suspension system as well, but it doesn't have those pistons that are visible and, and such. You can see them here because we keep the hex screw design uh, yeah. where you can openly see the, the, the pistons, but you can't see them from the side. Yeah. So it also uh, completes a, a bit more of a classy look um, while still being a perfect sports watch because it, it can take a beating. Yeah. Um, we're, we're putting them through some rough beatings okay. <laughs> with activities we're doing, <laughs> and um, they can take them, even though it's a um, more classy looking a chronometer certified watch. Right. Well, I'm glad you put that away because I can't handle much more teasing about that piece. So, uh, <laughs> stop another call when we have it in stock for you guys. Yeah, no, I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. So, so people watching, that's that's coming in a few months, I would say, right? A handful of months, but it is coming. So we're going to be starting with the with the element, the pilot, and the motorsport together. Exactly. Fantastic. Uh, 
the element uh, where you can see we called it element because it's not it's it's not a pilot it's a bit racing inspired from the dial um and um it's it's kind of uh, home in all elements mm -hmm. and um this one has a ceramic bezel right. so a full ceramic bezel um and we're playing a bit with uh with our um production capabilities which is um which are specialized in different materials not only steel or titanium and one of the great features that you've seen and that you've liked at the show oh. is uh, this buckle that comes uh, with the uh, element. Yep. And you can have it as an upgrade for... Um, uh, we can actually add that to your shop as well as an upgrade for all models. Right. For all the, as, uh, the as, tracks, yeah. as an upgrade. So the buckle, um, the buckle frame is made from a carbon fiber composite. So it's carbon microfiber. Uh, about 70% and the rest is resin. Yeah. So it's it's ultra hard, durable, and strong, uh, yet about only 30%, uh, not even 30%, the weight of uh, steel. Yeah. I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you, I, I am a, a little different than most. I don't love deployment buckles. And when I saw that one, again, I was blown away because it was, it was by far the most comfortable one I've ever had. I love the feeling of that composite and that... Uh, you know, the resin and, and carbon against my skin versus the metal. And it it's feels, very light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does it makes it a big difference. Light and sturdy, so it doesn't really bend or, or anything. It's it's not, um, it will give you the feeling and the confidence of, uh, of steel. Yeah. <laughs> but it's more comfortable to wear and lighter. Right. And one of the features also is uh, the patented micro adjustments. Oh, that yeah. You never, you never get that on a, on a leather strap. If somebody um, has put... Um, some thoughts in their in their metal bracelet and some budget because it's it's quite expensive to produce. Sure. You'll find it on a metal bracelet, but you will never find a micro adjustment on leather. Mm -hmm. um, it lets you adjust by seven millimeters in five steps. So you know you have the holes to set your your wrist size. Yep. Um, as in a regular um, clasp, uh, but then um, your wrist expands, or you know when it, when you, when you exercise or when it gets warmer. Um, you can just, um, without taking off the watch, press a little button here and it will give seven millimeters and, and give you some air. So you're never going to be between sizes on, on no. this strap. That's no, amazing. We, Absolutely we amazing. It. And we found uh, wearing them that you'll actually use it multiple times a day just because you can. Sure. So you will feel, maybe you get a bit, maybe you will, you know, um, mess up your other watches a little bit because you <laughs> you'll get more expecting for the perfect fit. So during the day when you're at the computer and you're like, oh, it's a bit loose, you just go and tighten it yep. a little bit, but you would never have to take your watch off and change the whole. So so it's a very, very handy feature. And that also plays in well to, to having the larger size, but being able to get it to a point where you feel it's very comfortable, right? Like, like for instance, um, the Ocean Crawler here I have on a NATO, and I feel like I'm a little bit between sizes here, so it does move around on me. I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't particularly mind it too much, but, um, but it would be super nice to have it fit exactly the way I want it. Now I can go and eat uh, sushi with soy sauce, and you know, an hour and a half later, then all of a sudden it's a little bit tight, you know. <laughs> and uh, so that thing, that that buckle's uh, brilliant. Yeah. So for the essence, we have a, a, a yeah. Sorry for teasing the essence again. <laughs> but we have, uh, Packages for with different straps that people yeah. can order as a um, as upgrades. Yep. And there's a NATO in there too, and we've we've been wearing it. Um, Marks and I've been wearing the NATOs recently just to test, and we found that yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually you have to adjust. But even then, sometimes you're a bit in between sizes, and since we now always have the perfect fit, it kind yeah. of yeah, as I mentioned, it could mess you up for your other watch bands. Right. Yeah, well, thanks for that. <laughs> um, all right, cool. You, uh, so yeah. we're looking at motorsport. Tell tell me about the pilot real quick, and then the motorsport. And uh, I don't want to. I don't. You know, I, I, we could talk for hours, obviously. And uh, but there are people who who want to watch this and uh, and have to get on with their life as well. So um, let's see. Let's see quickly what we have and a little explanation. So, so the pilots, we have a, a whole range of different designs with, a, you know, more classic looking steel yep. uh, with some polished and brushed elements, um, open case back with the Valjoux. Yep. Um, and then, or some sporty ones, 
uh, with a PVD coating and carbon fiber elements on the dial and also on the ring on the side. Yep. Same movement, same uh, case construction. And right. for all of these, we also have um, a titanium, a really nice feeling um, bracelet that's available for all of these uh, models. Okay. Um, here on the blue, that it kind of looks weird. Looks like we're trying to sell you a watch on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> maybe guys, maybe you check out the pictures because they will give you a better idea. I'll, maybe I'll edit some pictures into this. How's that? All right. <laughs> cool. All right. Yes, do that. And then we have the Motorsports collection, of which, uh, unfortunately, only two models are cu currently available. Yeah. We're producing the other one with um, a carbon fiber bezel inlay. Yeah. And this one is uh, aluminum, obviously um, red. Yeah. Um, what's special about this also is that we move the crown um, to a left-hand drive just um, for this um, pretty big uh, crown protection, not to, to mess too much with your wrist when you're wearing a... It makes it a whole lot more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not digging into your hand. Exactly. Awesome, awesome. well... The element collection, obviously, that we've already showed you yeah. quick. So that there are um, two dial variations, black and white. Okay. Um, with either a ceramic bezel or a stainless steel bezel. Yeah. And actually, the, it makes, I mean, literally between this and this watch, the only, oh no, sorry, the only difference is the, um, the only difference is the bezel, but it looks completely different. I was going to say, completely different look. You might have to get both. <laughs> <laughs> with those, um, with those uh, straps here, uh, you can, you have a quick release, so you can, you can get a um, pro imitation calf letter. Uh, in brown, you get an oiled leather with a white stitching for a bit more sporty looking um, watch. And then for the white version, the, the brown croco or alligator yeah. and it says, works pretty well. And then what we have done, another tease for the for the essence is um, <laughs> you can um, you can change the straps on the essence also with a quick release. Yeah. But then you have a quick release on the buckle side, and I've added a bracket here. Wow. So Actually, you can up. It's a 22 millimeter buckle, and it will work on all bracelets. So even if you don't have a Formex, you can upgrade uh, this really nice buckle. Um, even if you don't have a quick release on the bracelet, you just um, pop right. it in there. That's yeah. awesome. Your tongue buckle, and you can you can switch this for it. And um, what we also did is we developed a system here uh, where you have a quick release on metal bracelet. Yep. It's not just an ergo, it's not just a lever, because we actually have a curved spring bar on the on the essence. Yeah. So we have to come up with a whole new uh, little system uh, where which allows you to switch up everything by hand without tools. And I think uh, Ralph is mentioning this, not just to tease you, but also to say we're coming with a stainless steel bracelet and a rubber strap also for the element yeah. uh, pretty soon, right? Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I mean, you know, I mentioned it at least once or twice. You guys are really doing things that are very, very different. Um, and the fact that, you, that you're that you coming up with all these, these details and all these things that you can do, it's not a necessity, right? You can, you can have your collection. You can have regular straps. You can have regular buckles and go about your way and sell them. This is just taking, taking the idea of owning a brand and running a brand to a whole new level. Uh, and, and add that to the fact of the apps and you know, all the personal care and customer service and it's, uh, it's, you guys are doing something extremely unique and that's why I'm really stoked that we're going to be, you know, working together. And we're we're, we're, we're really excited Thank as you. well, yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys taking so much time with us uh, today. <laughs> For everybody watching this, the Formex watches are up on watchgauge.com as you, uh, as you are here viewing this and uh, I'm looking forward to this, fellas. I'm looking forward to doing some work together. I'm obviously looking forward to the new piece coming out in a few months, but uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, John. John. All right, listen, we'll talk very, very soon because we have a lot to discuss business-wise. All right. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Take, Take care. care. Right. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. See ya. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you're seeing this part of the clip, that means you watched the entire video. For that, I am extremely grateful. I hope that you had some great insight into Formex, their operation, their watches. I am going to do a shorter version of the Formex intro probably over the next week or so, so that'll be up on YouTube. As always, like, follow, share, comment, 
everything that you're able to do, feel free to reach out to me. I appreciate your support. Every time you hit that button to subscribe, like, or any of that stuff, it greatly helps WatchGauge. So I thank you so much. Don't forget to check out the Formex on WatchGauge.com, and I will be getting back to you very, very, very soon over the next few days with a new brand. Cheers.